Now we have one of the most interesting stories in the entire book known as Asbab al Nuzul. You know, the reasons of revelation. For me, this is the most riveting story and I will spend inshallah the next 10 minutes with this beautiful story. The battle of Tabuk took place. Everyone was supposed to go out. There were certain people who remained behind because they were sick and ill. They were given an excuse. We spoke about it yesterday. There were certain people who remained behind because they were hypocrites and they didn't want to go. And we spoke about how they presented excuses that were rejected by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we will come to the exact statement of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a few minutes. But there were three people who stayed behind. They were good people, but they were lazy. Only laziness. It's known as at tasweef Tasweef means sofa, sofa, sofa. You know, I will do it, I will do it, I will do it, and you don't end up doing it. I will go for salah, I will go for salah. Before you know it, salah is over. I'm going to turn before the end of Ramadan, before the end of Ramadan, before you know it, it's already Eid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. It's a reality. So don't do that. Shaitan's first way of grabbing hold of us is to make us delay. That delay is shaitan's trap. Don't be entrapped. Don't waste time. You want to turn to Allah, do it now. N O W. The minute you say, okay, as soon as tomorrow morning, I'm going to start that tomorrow morning is already diluted. By the time you walk out of the masjid, everything is diluted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to change now. I mean, so Kaab ibn Malik radiallahu anhu was one of those three who he says, I was busy with my things. And I said, okay, I'm going to prepare. I was preparing a little bit. I said, okay, I'm going to prepare. I'll go out. I'll go out. He says, I didn't ever stay away from the battles of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam besides the battle of Badr. And that was also a story. But here I didn't mean to stay before I knew it. The army was gone. The army was gone. And I said, okay, I'll catch up with them. But before I knew it, I said, now, you know what? It's too late. It's hot. And you know, how am I going to catch up with them? And I was just waiting with the people. So this hadith is muttafaq alayhi upon the highest level of authenticity. Ka'b ibn Malik himself is narrating the hadith. He says, you know what? When I started looking in Medina, I only saw people whom I knew were either sick and ill. They had an excuse or others whom we knew these were some hypocrites. So I was like an odd one out, man. And I was feeling, hey, what's going on? So when the Prophet ﷺ got to Tabuk, he asked about Ka'b ibn Malik. He said, where's Ka'b ibn Malik? Because he missed him. He was a good man. So the people told him, oh, you know, this man, he's, he stayed behind. And some people said a few bad things. So Mu'ad ibn Jabal anhu said, no, don't say anything bad. We don't know him as a bad person. So let's not utter any words of evil. So later on, uh, Ka'b ibn Malik says, I'll never forget Mu'ad because of his defense of mine when it was more needed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So he says, when they came back from Tabuk, as they were coming back, Hypocrites were starting to plan what excuses they're going to give. And I'm starting to think, what excuse am I going to give? Because now I had no excuse. And the Battle of Tabuk, you know, they had a successful mission and they were coming back. And uh, he says, I didn't know what to do. And I was just asking around and people were having different comments, say this and say that. But in my heart, I said, I can't lie. I cannot lie to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I cannot lie. So he says, when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came back, I was watching. And I saw him, he came calm, he entered the masjid, he read two rakat of salah, and he was sitting so calm and relaxed. And people started coming to him with all excuses. Ja al muadirun You know, those people who wanted one comes, he says, Oh Messenger, you know, I had a problem, my wife. And oh Messenger, I had a problem, you know, my business. Oh Messenger, I had a problem, you know, I had a sore, whatever here and there. Everything excuse in the book was mentioned. The Prophet, وسلم, these hypocrites were 80 plus, just over 80. And what he did, he said, look, for me, it's okay. Allah knows what's in your heart, which means he excused them over and above, meaning, you know, outwardly excused, but inside what's happening in your heart. I leave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Ka'b ibn Malik radiallahu anhu went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's made salam. He greeted him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam greeted him back, but he had a smirk, a smile. And Ka'b ibn Malik says, I knew he was upset. And he says, what about you? Why did you stay away? Ka'b ibn Malik says, Wallahi, O Messenger, if it was anyone besides you, I would have presented an excuse. But there is no point in me lying and making you happy when Allah is not happy. There is no point in me lying and making you happy when Allah may expose me. So he says, I want to be honest. I was the strongest and the wealthiest at the time. I was lazy and I didn't come. I have no excuse. Ka'b ibn Malik, so honest. The Prophet says, okay, get up, walk out until Allah reveals verses or until Allah gives us some decision in your regard. He was shocked. Get up and walk out, out, gone. Ka'b ibn Malik, 
literally he got up he started walking so some of the people of Banu Salama they walked behind him and they said hey we've never known you to have sinned what you do go back and just present any excuse look he's accepting everybody's excuses just make up something and go you cannot be a person who's rejected from the majlis and from the the uh, you know gathering of Muhammad Sallallahu go back he says I almost went back and I wanted to lie but I told myself no ways I'm not going to tell a lie I don't want to lie I cannot lie in this regard it was something extremely serious and you're lying to whom to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so he says I asked him do you know of any other people who are same like me you know anyone else who the same thing happened to they said yes there are two others Hilal ibn Umayyah the old man radiallahu an, and Murara ibn Rabia radiallahu an, another man exactly the same thing you are saying that's what happened to them so he said, oh, you know, now he's got company. There are three of them, not just one. But they had participated in the battle of Badr, which means they were serious Muslims. They were, you know, they were top notch. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May he grant us a resurrection with the people of Badr. Say, Amin. So the Prophet sallam, when he was faced with all these three, the, the ruling was the same. Ignore these people. There came a time when these people came with their excuses. The same thing happened. And after some time, the Prophet ﷺ told his companions, do not speak to them. Allah has told us to literally boycott these people. No speaking, no greeting, no responding, no nothing. So they were very, very, very touched, hurt, should I say. The two of them, Hilal ibn Umayyah, Murara ibn Rabi'ah, they stayed at home and they were crying and crying and making dua, asking Allah's forgiveness. And they, they didn't even understand. You know, like we say in our terminology, you don't know whether you're coming or you're going. Subhanallah. As for Kaab, he says, I was young, the youngest of the lot. I used to go to the masjid and I used to intentionally greet people. Assalamu alaikum. No reply. I used to go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum. And he didn't even look in my direction. I used to try and see his lips. Are they moving? No movement. He says, I used to. The most beloved to me. Look at the test. Look how they want to achieve forgiveness. Look at how dedicated they are. Look at how they committed the sin. Now they want forgiveness. They're ready to do anything in order to please Allah and his messenger for their mistake. So now, Kaab ibn Malik radiallahu anhu says, you know what? I went through and I tried again. And nothing happened. And in the marketplaces, no one's greeting me. He says, I had a cousin of mine, very close to me, by the name of Abu Qatada, radiallahu anhu, and he had a little garden, and I jumped the wall into, and I saw him, and I said, Assalamu alaikum, you know, thinking, ooh, at least now it's just me and you. He turned away. I was shocked. I was hurt. I felt that, look, what's going on? And he says, after some time, the king of Ghassan sent a messenger to Medina Munawwara with a letter. Remember, this is Hadith Muttafaq Ali. It's an authentic Hadith. He sent a letter with one of the business people. When they came to Medina, they said, we are looking for a man known as Ka'b ibn Malik. When they found me, they gave me the letter. The letter said, the king of Ghassan is telling, has heard about how your people have boycotted you and is offering you asylum. And you come there and we will look after you. He says, I, I had hatred for this letter. I took it and threw it into the fire. I didn't, it didn't even touch me. How people are trying to use your moment of softness to try and con you into leaving your whole Islam and your deen. It might happen to some people during your difficult days. Other people will come to you and try and convince you what you're worshipping is wrong. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom you are worshipping. It's Allah's test. So he says, uh, I threw it away. 40 days later, 40 days later, message got to our wives to say, you need to separate from your husbands. That was very, very heavy. So the wife of Hilal ibn Umayyah comes to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Oh messenger, the man is old. He can't even do his things on his own. I'm just serving him. He's had no physical relationship with me since the day this has happened. He's not even into, he's just sitting, crying, engaging in tawbah, istighfar, whatever else. 40 days have gone. Can't you give me permission to actually just stay with him? So permission was granted to her because as it is, there was no physical relationship. The other two, some of the people of Banu Salama went to uh, Ka'b ibn Malik and they told him, why don't you also go and get an excuse for your wife? Look, she was excused. I'm sure yours will be excused. He says, no ways, not at all. I'm not going to go. So later on, according to this narration, 50 days later, he says, I read Salatul Fajr. How many days later? 50 days later. And they were making dua and crying and so much had happened. He says, I made Salatul Fajr and I was sitting 
at the top of one of the houses, the rooftop, and I heard from the top of Jabal Sila. Jabal Sila is one of the mounts of Medina Munawwara. And he says, I heard someone loudly saying, Ya Kaab, Abshir, good news, Kaab, good news, Kaab. And he says, immediately I fell prostrate. I made a sajda too. I knew that this is, this is it. I knew that Allah has forgiven us. And I fell prostrate. I said, Subhana Rabbi al -Ala. In the meantime, verses were revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, forgiving these people. Verse number 118 of Surah At-Tawbah, together with the previous verse 117, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah has forgiven the believers and, you know, those who participated in the battle of Tabuk and so on. And Allah says, وَعَلَى الثَّلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ خُلِّفُوا And Allah has also forgiven those three who presented their excuses who were actually who had remained behind those three who had remained behind the term khulifu refers to those who remained behind one of two things those who did not present excuses with the rest of the hypocrites they were three there was an exception they came with the truth so they were behind in the sense that they were not from among the hypocrites and also those who did not participate in the battle of Tabuk. So he says, immediately that man came rushing to me. I came running down the mount. I shook a hand for the first time in so many days. It felt like it was not normal. Subhanallah. Imagine you shaking somebody's hand for the first time after so long. And he says, I gave this man part of my clothing. It was the system at the time where you take off your clothing and you give it to them. And he says, then I didn't have something proper to wear. I want to go into the masjid. I quickly bought some clothing. I borrowed some clothing. I wore it and I rushed into the masjid. As I'm going, people are giving me good news, giving me good news. They want to hug me. Little armies of people congratulating me, telling me, wow, you know, mashallah, you, you have finally been cleared, finally been cleared. And he says, Subhanallah, I went into Muhammad Sallallahu I saw him sitting in the masjid and I noticed around him were people. Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiallahu anhu, he got up to congratulate me. No one else got up. But when I saw Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I smiled at him and I greeted him and I got a response, Subhanallah. And he says, I saw his face lit up as though it was a piece of a moon. Kana idha surra istanara wajhuhu ka'annahu qita'atu qamar. Whenever he was happy, his face started shining as though it was a piece of the moon. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, I saw he was deeply happy. And he says, Oh, Kaab, I want to give you good news of the best day that has passed your life from the moment your mother gave birth to you. So he says, Oh, Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is it from you or from Allah? Which means the forgiveness. Are you just going to tell it to me? Or is there a verse that came down? Wow, because if there's a verse, wow, they're going to be reading it up to the day of judgment. Subhanallah. So he says it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he gave the news and this man was so excited. He says, oh messenger, during my days of my dua, I promise that when I'm forgiven, I'm going to donate all my money for charity. That's it. You know, so the messenger says, hang on, keep some money, keep some of the money, give away some and keep some. So anyway, he gave some of that that wealth and he says subhanallah allah had forgiven us after such a long time and these verses were revealed he says had i told a lie what would have happened had i told a lie initially perhaps the messenger i would have just been from among the hypocrites and he says after that to the day i died and the day he made mention of the narration he says i haven't told a single lie not even by error and allah has tested me so much where things have come to me it was simple to get out of it with a lie but i didn't lie it kept on happening up to this day he says and inshallah up to the day i die